favorite part of the work I do is seeing people in my lab succeed. Mentoring and teaching people the skills and then the excitement of making discoveries on their own. Um, I went through that phase myself. I had incredible fun. To pass this on to the next generation, I, I feel is the most rewarding part of my job. I'm Peter Walter. I'm a professor at University of California in San Francisco and investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Our research concerns trying to understand how cells work. So cells are complicated structures. They have lots of internal organization. And what we would like to understand is how basic principles guide this organization and build this organization. I grew up in Berlin. I got first interested in science when I started working in my father's chemist shop. I started experimenting with pyrotechnical devices that I was building, so I got fascinated how you can make things burn and explode. I ended up in Nashville, in Tennessee, where I studied organic chemistry. And in the end, I got my PhD at the Rockefeller University. I basically moved from there to San Francisco. What I love about San Francisco is it has a very high energy level. The need to constantly reinvent yourself is sort of intrinsic in what you do. Being thrown in a different environment, in a different culture, made a big difference to my personal development. It has added a lot to my independence. When I was a graduate student, I studied how proteins, which are basically the machines that carry out all the cells' functions, um, end up in the right place. So when I started my own lab here, we started figuring out how proteins, as they're being made, get actually folded into the correct structures. Peter Walter was uh, my graduate student in the late 70s and early 80s uh, of the last century. Peter made two major, major discoveries. One of them when he was in my lab, and then he made a second major paradigmatic discovery. Not one single discovery, but a string of discoveries by working on something which is called the unfolded protein response. It's basically out of this very simple question, how does one part of the cell know what's happening in another one and translate that information into an action that the unfolded protein response was discovered. Understanding this can lead to you now understand what goes wrong in disease. So it's a value of basic research, basic discovery, and now has boomed into a massive field. Peter is a force of nature, and he is full of his own ideas, and he is not dependent on continuing one idea that he picked up when he was a graduate student. By working on the unfolded protein response, he reinvented himself. For me, since now I'm running a relatively large group, I don't have the blocks of time I would need to do experiments myself. So doing six with my hand has remained an expression of my manual ability. So this is a, um, it's gonna be a sculpture in the garden. It's my first piece welded exclusively in copper. It was a mistake to, when you start working in a new material, to, to start with a six foot high sculpture. So it took forever. This is my second time machine, which um, I gave to a friend. And this is a machine that takes this clock and squeezes time out of it. When the bottle is full, all you need to do is close it off and you have all the time you want. So for me, science and art are actually quite closely connected. In both disciplines, it's not enough that you just do something well that has been done before. People are rewarded for thinking out of the box. So I think the two really go wonderfully together. We have this mechanics, so all you need to do 
to make discoveries here is to turn the crank. And then various pipetting devices and fractionation devices and a little slicer here. Up here we have the serendipity seeker that injects the appropriate amount of, of good luck. And then most importantly, here's where the publications come out. And of course a flower vase to, to emphasize uh, the beauty of nature here. We have a success meter. 95% of the experiments we try fail. People are constantly faced with frustration and doubting themselves and not quite knowing where to go. And that's just part of being an explorer. In that respect, I think a healthy and happy lab environment is an incredibly important thing. People come here, they work long hours, and it's important that in the morning they wake up and are happy to go to the lab. It's a very tight-knit community, almost a family. Everything we do is teamwork. So whenever a prize is given to an individual, it's really given to the whole group. The idea here is we are building a bridge and here I am adding new boards to that thing. It's a, it's a cartoon this is based on. And the line is, never mind what's holding it up, just keep hammering. <laughs> yeah, so these are the different uh, uh, editions, different international editions, translations of our textbooks, translated in, I think, some 13 languages and used all over the world. Well, it has been a fantastic 30 years of incredibly exciting science and research. I learned a great deal from him how to make the daily work routine a bit more fun. That's what Peter was all about. Science for him was fun. And it still is. <laughs>